Hey folks, everything new under the sun? Well, this thing is moving along. Uh, the Ukraine situation is very interesting. Uh, things are uh, rapidly evolving. And of course, you know the, the prior video um, shows us uh, 555 views. That was just this morning. And it was the idea of uh, the uh, Maskarova, uh, Maskarovka. And it, it related to basically this this uh, idea that uh, they pulled the wool over our eyes. Um, they uh, did a little trick and they got uh, um, Prigozhin and um, and the Wagner group uh, and all the mercenaries uh, over around into Belarus. And that was a speculation. And, uh, and looking at that image, of course, uh, that you saw in that video... Um, that that would be uh, the most likely direction because uh, um, Prigozhin was uh, kicked out basically of Russia into Belarus. Well, it all seems to be a, a ploy now, and uh, I think the U.S. might know about it as well. Uh, this is an article uh, from Zero Hedge. Uh, Anthony Blinken, he hints at more Russia unrest to come. We haven't seen the last act. So U.S. came out and said, well, they knew this uh, this uh, supposed coup was going to happen. Do they also know that uh, the coup was actually um, all a ruse, all a charade um, in, in an effort to uh, get troops moved into place? Um, not only uh, Prigozhin and the mercenary group, the Wagner group, uh, into Belarus to, uh, you know, potentially attack Kiev, but also to get military and martial law onto the ground into Moscow. Uh, it seems like this is being used for a lot of uh, potential future events. And uh, apparently Anthony Blinken uh, maybe thinks something is coming out of it as well. I don't know what the U.S. military knows, of course, but we're kind of all watching this play out. Blinken suggested on Sunday that the U.S. was expecting more unrest in Russia following uh, the Wagner chief Evgeny Prigozhin's two-day uprising. He says, I think we're in the midst of a moving picture we haven't seen the last act. We're watching it very closely, he said, uh, on Sunday. Now, what's the news coming out uh, today? Well, uh, this is interesting. Uh, so the news, this is War News 247. Um, Sorovkin plan in action. The Wagner to attack Lutsk, Lviv, and Kiev. Deployment of thousands of troops along Belarus, western Ukraine. Now, is this true? Is it not true? I don't know. I haven't seen yet uh, that War News 247 has been totally inaccurate, nor have I heard anybody else um, come up with evidence uh, to suggest that. Um, but uh, this this could be basically what we were saying could be uh, happening uh, in, ter in terms of this Maskarovka uh, situation where um, they ba basically trick us as to what's happening. And they, I think for a large part they did. They took the world by surprise. We thought a coup was happening uh, and... It wasn't. It looks like uh, a massive rearranging of, of troops. Uh, the transfer of thousands of Wagner uh, soldiers to Belarus began with its founder, Prigozhin, uh, confirming that the coup was fake, says this article. I never wanted to overthrow Putin. And so Prigozhin came out and did a, a short video, and he said that. He said he never wanted to overthrow Putin. The first information indicates that two camps are being built for Wagner in Belarus with a capacity of 8,000 soldiers each. So, 16,000 soldiers, and, and I think the reports were that uh, a Wagner group had about 25,000 soldiers. Uh, so I guess they're going to put, you know, at least 16,000 in Belarus. And uh, what's going to come of that? Well, he, so his forces are uh, following along with him. It's not just Prigozhin. He's not going <clears> to, <throat> he's not going to retire in Belarus and uh, th this is the speculation that we were saying that, you know, something didn't make sense. It was a little fishy the way it all turned out. Prigozhin, says the article, will soon open a second front from Belarus targeting western Ukraine. Uh, and this could mean that Russia could move in along its border and take over. And Prigozhin and mercenaries could, uh, you know, take the, the northern border there in Belarus. Uh, it says it is also significant that the Wagner recruitment centers were reopened throughout Russia. Forces are being assembled for the final assault. Again, according to this, propaganda on both sides. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, you make your, uh, uh, your decisions on what is accurate, what is not here. So they're recruiting uh, apparently two new uh, bases of operation for uh, the Wagner group. The first camp is being built in 
um, Mogilev region, 200 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Its area, as reported, will be 24,000 square meters and accommodate 8,000 soldiers. It will be completed by Tuesday afternoon with fast track procedures. So they're they're moving quick. They know their time is short because uh, Ukraine is going to have to move its troop at, troops after the coup. After Ukraine thought maybe there's a coup headed up to Moscow, it wasn't getting ready for soldiers on its northern border. Although they do have um, defense there, they were probably not uh, look expecting a complete uh, different uh, zone of offense uh, to be coming from Russia or Russian proxies. Uh, it says, uh, we wrote then Moscow is going to be extremely risky offensive operation with Lutsk as the first target and Lviv as the final target, while at the same time there will be two more units that will keep Ukrainian forces busy in Kiev and Chernihiv. Kiev is not a primary target, apparently. Uh, if the plan gets out to Russians, then it will not only cause <clears throat> will not only cause the end of Ukraine, but also the end of Moldova. So Moldova is being pulled into this, who's in the southern part of Ukraine. The Russians intend to advance vertically by sealing the border with Poland, opening a path to Transnistria. So what's in Transnistria, folks? Well, that's where the big arms depot is that the Ukrainians and the Russians have been fighting over. So to have a new line of uh, offense, defense open, a new line of war, uh, a new vector, means that uh, Ukraine is going to be stretched thin on uh, you know three different borders, three different areas, potentially. Uh, now, apparently, with you know more Russian soldiers into the mix, that, that's what it seems to me. Um, the main target is Lusk region. The first targets are the cities of Sarny and Koval. The initial attack will be made by infantry only. Um, so here is here is a tweet by uh, Fantux News. Uh, Russian independent media outlet uh, Verska reports that a camp will be built in Mogilev region of Belarus to accommodate uh, PMC uh, fighters uh, from the Wagner Group. 8,000 in that case. So, uh, you know, getting closer to... Kiev and on the northern front. So we have here, um, so this in the middle is, or at the bottom right hand corner of this is uh, Kiev. Uh, so far as I know, it's in uh, Russian, I guess, but in Kiev, and you have a bunch of circles there kind of showing um, maybe the offensive lines that uh, the Wagner group uh, may be um, looking to deploy. And uh, again, I wish I could speak uh, Russian there, but uh, uh, Wagner's camp in Belarus is the title of this. And then you see a, a kind of a march to uh, what I what I believe is Kiev there. Um, so, you know, yet to be seen what's going on there. But this is an update from uh, Al Jazeera. And uh, uh, let's see, there's a couple of new things here. Uh, apparently, the Belarusian leader, uh, Lukashenko, who, you know, apparently orchestrated and, and initiated the deal to, you know, quote unquote, release uh, uh, promotion, um, uh, has uh, is going to make a statement later today, Monday. Um, the Telegram channel said uh, Lukashenko will answer everything very soon, apparently. And uh, of course, the U.S. is saying, you know, they had no involvement in any of this. Um, they were involved. So so that's interesting. Um, Moldova, note that Moldova was mentioned there, uh, and Moldova may be a part of uh, the next wave of attacks uh, as Transnistria is basically a, a small slice of Moldova to the south of Ukraine, um, uh, up by the, the water there. Um, and uh, Moldova could be taken over, and Moldova PM says Russian mutiny shows Moscow's weakness. Well, maybe not. Maybe this is all kind of 3D, 4D uh, chess that's going on. And uh, they actually um, uh, made a move now to get uh, more, uh, you know, the mercenary group on the northern front, uh, Russia to move in on the, the southern front and maybe take that arms depot. Um, and uh, here's the, the latest information. from Biden basically says that, uh, you know, they weren't involved in the mutiny. Um, you know, who knows? Is he lying? Is he not lying? Is, you know, um, uh, it, did CIA have any part of it? Certainly they knew of what was happening. Uh, but that's interesting nonetheless. So, uh, Prigozhin, yeah, says he did not intend to overthrow the government. And it looks like all a plan. Uh, maybe he was offered some more money. And so now he's basically moving to uh, Belarus. Uh, again, according to um, this, according to, uh, this article. 
in uh, War News 247 uh, to uh, set up his fighters in Belarus and uh, to start that northern front, if you will, and uh, start taking some land there. So interesting situation, uh, and we'll keep following this. Apparently, the U.S. has no idea what's going on. Uh, they said uh, they weren't part of uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the coup or whatever it was. Um, but I think many were right to kind of question this and say, you know, something funny is going on in Russia. It does make sense that a 24-hour, you know, Prigozhin came out and said, you know, uh, uh, we're marching to Moscow, and then all of a sudden, 24 hours later, or whatever it was, uh, you know, he's he's going to Belarus, no troubles, not in any legal trouble, and uh, still with his army. Uh, that Moscow would allow him to leave with all his army and then set up bases in Belarus. Well, that just tells you right there that if that is true, uh, then this was all fake, this was all a ruse, this was great theatrics, uh, basically uh, in an attempt to move uh, the Wagner Group, all the mercenaries, all the hardware up through what Russia and over to Belarus to basically switch positions and to get them a little bit of time so that Ukraine couldn't uh, mount uh, you know counteroffensive or move defensive forces quickly enough because now now Ukraine's going to be scrambling with all this information um, to uh, to get around and spread its forces out even more thinly uh, to uh, to the north part where uh, they could have active incursions and attacks on Ukraine and they're getting ever closer to Kiev now, which, you know, if that's the main city, if that gets taken down, uh, you know, Ukraine is effectively no more at that point. So I will leave it there, guys. We'll keep following this pretty fascinating stuff happening. Uh, no one knows what's happening, and that's why all this speculation. So we'll keep following it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.